Mei! You see, no, I will. Welcome to Shoujo and Tell, where we discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not, talk about themes, and just generally geek out. Today, February 12th, 2023, we'll be Shoujo and Telling about the series Clamp School Detectives by Clamp, which actually is a shoujo manga <laughs> out of the three Clamp School unofficial trilogies that we've done so far. It is the only one that is actually a shoujo manga, and it ran in monthly Asuka magazine. I'm your host, Asher McDonald, and I'm joined by my husband, Asher Softman. Hello, Asher. Hello, wife. <laughs> That's right. Go Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the day that the Eagles defeat their old coach and Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We are here <laughs> to talk about further clamp school shenanigans. Um, as a reminder, we will try to keep this first section, this like first 10 to 15 minutes, spoiler free. But again, this is also only a three volume manga. So what's a spoiler? I don't know. Also, just again, to beep in on where we are in the clamp publishing timeline, because it is so much. We are currently in 1992 and we're going to publish into 1993 here. So Asher and I are two to three years old. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Clamp is starting X. Um, they also have their legend of Huan Yang. I don't know how to say that. Magic Knight Ray Earth, Miyuki Chan in Wonderland, uh, and the one I love are all coming out within these two years. They're either starting, starting and completing, like Clamp's doing too much. <laughs> so that's where we are. All while they're doing all that, they're making this little fun little manga, fun little shoujo manga. So, Asher, for the people. For the people. What is Clamp School Detectives about? What's, give me a plot <laughs> synopsis. I wouldn't say there's a plot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of chronicling the episodic adventures of the three members of the Clamp School Elementary Division Student Council or Student Board, whatever that was called. Nokoru Imonoyama, the president, he's in sixth grade. Suo Takamura, who is in fifth grade, he is the secretary. And Akira Ijuin, who is in fourth grade, right? Yes. Uh, and is the treasurer. And it goes from them sort of just being weird little elementary schoolers in their weird school nation state, privately owned. By, no Wealthy by Nokoru's school, family yeah. to becoming the clamp school detectives whose job, according to Nokoru, is to uh, help damsels in distress wherever they may be, whatever may be the problem. Whatever age they are. Any <laughs> whatever, and all yeah. Damsels in distress. All maidens, yeah. All females. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of the story. Uh, it, it helps... I think to know that Nokoru's the flamboyant and uh, eccentric one. Suo is the uh, disciplinarian, the taskmaster, the one that gets things done. And Akira's just happy to be here. Akira's just happy to be here. He's like, what's up? I already had my own manga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So prior, I read this first in this this go around which doesn't usually happen because asher reads faster than me but I, w while i was trying to describe what it was like to asher i was like it's like tokyo babylon if you just stripped all the tonal elements of tokyo babylon out of it and he was like so not tokyo babylon i was like it's it's like the light <laughs> to tokyo babylon's darkness <laughs> <It's> like that <laughs> And Asher, probably somewhat more accurately, was just like, it's a more ridiculous Oran High School Girls Club. <laughs> I think I'm closer, but I have a slight bias. We, we are both leaning towards our um, biases. There. <laughs> yeah. not, not that either of us hate either of those manga. But <laughs> right. No, I mean, like, I am biased towards my own opinion. Uh, not yes. biased towards Oran over Tokyo Babylon. That's that's not okay, a rating. Are, that's not a rating that I'm being asked to do. I 
don't know that I would say that. Okay, that's good. I like to hear that. <laughs> so, Asher, is it true that neither you nor I had read this before, you know, this this Super Bowl weekend? Yes, it is true. It is true. We are, you know, not perfect. We're not perfect beings. <laughs> we can correct our mistakes. So, I guess, you know, the big question is, did you like it? Yeah. It was it was cute. It was all right. Like it's not deep. It's not it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Of the Clamp School unofficial trilogy we did, which includes Man of Many Faces and Dukleon's yes, Clamp School Defenders. Where do, where do you put it? You like best worst mid. <laughs> yeah. Um just a purely personal ranking, I'd put it second. I, I like Man of Many Faces. I forget. Is it Man of Twenty Faces or is it Man of Many Faces? I think it's Man of Many Faces. All right. I like Man of Many Faces more, but I do think that Clamp School Detectives is a more, it's more polished pacing wise, like storytelling wise. Like it knows what it's doing and it doesn't have ambitions beyond that. And yeah. Like, it's easier kind of to follow what's going on, even though what's going on is still patently ridiculous. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I also put it in the middle. I enjoyed Man of Many Faces more in the end, which is kind of a wild thing to say, but it's true. (laughs) (laughs) Just kind kind of a wild opinion, yeah. Um, And overall, like, I feel like, in the first volume, if it had kept doing those things, I actually probably would have liked it more. Like if it had leaned into the funny, like really over the top, uh, random solving cases with money thing <laughs> more, I think I would have liked it. But I felt like the cases became weaker and weaker and it didn't really find its footing, telling stories about the characters fully. Until the very end. I actually Until the feel very, like very end. If, yeah. if it had done what it was doing in the beginning, I would have been like, eh. Because I'm not big on that kind of humor, right? Like, uh-huh. but, you know, the the backstory episode, I was into that. <laughs> I guess I just like, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is really volume two, like hardcore, I was bored. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, it felt like it wasn't going anywhere. Like, the cases were getting weaker, and, yeah, we weren't getting anywhere with the characters. And those two things together made me be like, why am I here? Like, again, it it was definitely more polished and, like, paced more normal (laughs) than, (laughs) than the other two that we're including in this trilogy. But I don't think that necessarily meant it was more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I don't mean this as harsh as it's going to sound, but I just read Volume 2 today and I couldn't tell you what happens in it, you know? Right, exactly. (laughs) It's like the stories were probably fine, but, like, it didn't stick. It Uh, doesn't stick, Probably they helped some girls, you know? (laughs) (laughs) They almost assuredly helped some girls. Um, Yeah, but no, it it absolutely just, like, volume two, I'm like, what? I don't, like, I have notes. I can look back and be like, oh, yeah, uh, stuff happened there. Like, sure, but it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but I think, you know, it's very pretty and everything. Like, uh, if you're like, Clamp, I'm curious, like, I would say read it. Yeah, it's not a bad place to start with Clamp either. It doesn't get deep into their philosophies or their fun queer stuff but those things are there yeah the splashes Um, are there yeah yeah and yeah it's old school clamp so if you like old school clamp art style you got it right there yeah i was kind of like it's a bit mixed with their like newer art style i think you think it's it's so old though it is pretty old we're old we're ancient okay (laughs) (laughs) all right well if clamp school detective sounds intriguing to you it is available digitally from viz media for again i I think they're five dollars a volume 
Um, so if you have any interest in it, it's you know pretty cheap to legally obtain. I also think that you could find it fairly easily physically without like you know this pandemic times. Everything's a collector's item now. I don't really <laughs> advise that you do that, but like I think you could. Like when I looked it up earlier, I was like, all right. You could own this series for sure, like 40 bucks, maybe. I don't know. I don't think it's worth $40, but that's whatever you want to do. <laughs> and isn't there an anime too? There is an anime. I don't know that you can legally obtain that oh, in I any see. way. Okay. Maybe, maybe there's some physical Blu-rays. It's also, you know, it's a three-volume manga and a 26-episode anime, so... I think... It's not going to align. Right. No, I think they combine stuff from um, Man of Many Faces and Duke Leon. Yeah. They also just like draw new stuff. Right. From what I read, it sounded like they add more relationship stuff with like Suo and Nagisa or Mm. whatever. (laughs) Yeah. That's your opinion on that. Mm. All right. Sounds right. Sounds about right. That's what happened in volume two was Suo got a girl. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, you can... There is a DVD of uh, the anime that I guess you can get used <laughs> or something. Again, fairly easily. So yeah, so if anime is more your thing, you can go get that. All right, now it's time to dive into these three wacky, wacky characters and... This nation state school thing that's happening here. <laughs> We're gonna spoil all the things. So if you don't if you wanna go read it before you hear us talk about it, then pause, come back later. Here we go. All right, so Nokuru. So hard to say. Nokuru. <laughs> Nokuru Imonoyama. So we have we have seen Nokuru uh, a fair amount. Before this manga, in which he is the star, right? <laughs> uh, he he has shown up. Uh, he showed up a little bit in Man of Many Faces, and quite a decent amount actually in Duke Leon. But you weren't supposed to know it was Nokuru. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, month. you totally would never know. Who was it? I don't know. I don't know. Sure it was no it's Kuru a mystery. Or? It's a mystery. So, did the preconceptions we have about him go from those two things? Did they jive with? him in this yeah (laughs) yeah yeah he's a wacko (laughs) he's a wacko he's he's you know a brilliant nasa wants him yeah nasa wants him everybody wants his brain but also he is a complete weird eccentric child of riches of wealth he can do anything and he can do it because he has the resources so he's got that money yeah we we haven't 10 million dollars is apparently nothing to him right right so like the nakoru we have seen before is still the nakoru we have we just get more of a fleshed out picture of him yeah well okay so did you like that picture because the picture that we are painted is that nakoru is brilliant and but really his whole thing is like he's very chivalrous to a fault i guess like they talk about it being very diplomatic in the late chapter where there's actual character development right? <laughs> yes uh but more on suo's side so you know he suo doesn't really like nokuru but can't doesn't know why right because he's never really talked to this guy like you shouldn't hate people yeah you know what it was it was a crush. He's it in was. second grade. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay, fine. We're not there yet. Well, the point is then he's talking to his assassin mom. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, why do you not like him? He sounds very chivalrous and diplomatic. And he's just like, I don't. But like, he doesn't show preference to anyone. Mm. And like, that seems to bother Suo. Well, Suo. Does it bother you? No. Um, no. Well, well, you that, that's you. Thanks. <laughs> um, not, not, not because not that aspect of him in particular. But yes, you. I okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think, you know, it's worth noting that I do like this type of character historically more than you do. Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> love you. I love, you know, benevolent, charming, manipulative people as, as characters, not necessarily in real life. <laughs> not in real life. Mm, I, I, how would I know? I like Nakoru. I think he's annoying. I'm also aware he's 11. So, like, yeah, he should be annoying. Like, that's his whole thing. That's what 11 year olds are made for. Yeah. (laughs) Um, He's, you know, again, he has so much ability and then all the resources to use that ability, which means he has no checks on his impulses. <laughs> so yeah. the fact that he's channeling all of that into chivalry with all of its, both its allure and its problems, it's, you know, the, the manga kept trying to call them feminists. And I was like, you're not using that word, right? That's, that's not, not it. <laughs> that's not what's happening. No. Um, but like, you know, there is a sort of romance to this hero of women, right? Like, even now, that still has some resonance. Women are still marginalized, and it's nice to have a champion. It's it, He's a romantic figure. So, like, he's channeling all of that problematic power in a mostly good direction. He is helping people, and it's I completely understand Suo's frustration with him. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Like, no, do what you're supposed to do. Stop running off to play hero um, to people who don't actually really need it, mostly. No, he also has the superhero problem where, like, he's making his own problems. Yes. Like, he is the source of the reason why half of these damsels are quote unquote in distress. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because they have crushes on him that they're like, this can never be, like, you will never notice me unless I am sad like this right and i try to push you off a balcony (laughs) and (laughs) they're kind of not wrong well no they're wrong because he notices every female which is kind of gross um (laughs) but also like yeah he actually only kind of interacts with other people when there's a problem because he has a lot on his plate yeah and so i definitely find him very grating of course you do (laughs) I, I like this type of character more than you do. <laughs> it's just facts. Yeah. Okay, well, so not only then does Suo perhaps have a crush, I think he also would be jealous because, yeah, Nokuru would never notice him. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's that. I think there is also, like, an actual philosophical difference between them. It ends up working out well for them as a as a team, um, yeah. but does lead to friction between them. Yeah. <laughs> What's the philosophical difference? Should we get into Suo? Yeah, we can go ahead into Suo. All right. Oh, I'm introducing Suo. Are you so. not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Suo is, what was he? He's secretary. Yes. And he is definitely the straight-laced one <laughs> of the bunch. He's the hard ass. And he, so his family is is a famous ninja clan, so he's a ninja. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's very hard to like, like I like Suo visually the most because he has that, like his hair going into that point in the back is very old school shonen. Like I just look at him and I'm like, hello, tiny Joe from Cyborg 009. Yeah, I was going to say Ty from Digimon. <laughs> yeah. Same like, hair. He has absolutely those vibes. <laughs> um, but like is just absolutely like way more of a hard ass than either of those two characters you named. And I feel like Cyborg 009 is pretty like kind of a hard ass on himself, you know? It's definitely more berating, but like, damn, Suo just like does not have fun. He smiles once and it's manically at the end of this manga. <laughs> That's what we end on. <laughs> I was like, that's a choice. We have made a choice here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, his family is ninjas, but they ha- they started out as ninjas, but now they're bodyguards. So that's where the philosophical difference comes in, I think. 
So at Suo is my favorite too. Um, yes. Visually, he's not my favorite. I, I don't know that I am super into any of them visually. Like they're not Clamp's most inspired designs. No, they're little children that have different hair colors. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Suo's hair is blue, which I'm like, that's a choice. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but. No, I like Suo because, I mean, his whole deal is the warrior loyalty thing. I love that in a character. I especially love that in a character in juxtaposition with a character like Nokoru, where it works really well together. But so as a bodyguard, his whole deal or his family's whole deal, I think, and I think this is backed up by that one backstory chapter uh, mm-hmm. in, towards the end of the third volume is you find the one person that you dedicate your entire life to. You know, you never know when you're going to find your destiny. Always be prepared to find your destiny and save it with all your ninja stuff. So I think that's where his disconnect with Nokoru's philosophy comes in is that like no- Nokoru is like, I have these gifts that I must and should share with everyone. The Omonoyama mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. is a, um, a zaibatsu. They are kind of like, they're, they're, I mean, they're robber barons. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the whole setup of Clamp School is that the Omonoyama family is trying to create this sort of utopian meritocracy kind of place where it's still for their own ends, like they're trying to create the next generation of awesome people that are going to help out the Omonoyama family, I think. Yeah. Or, you know, Japan, which like is Imonoyama's country, but it, there is still an aspect of like, they're create, they're literally creating a community. You know, they're trying to provide for their students and for all the staff that works there. So, you know, the the benevolent dictator <laughs> kind of um, <laughs> concept, I think, does play into who Nokoru is and how he interacts with the world. And then the the warrior ethos, loyalty, devotion, one person super plays into Suo. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And it makes them a powerful team. Yeah, so what's Akira doing here? <laughs> um, he's being cute. He's the mascot. He's the mascot! He's their pet. <laughs> he's their pet. Okay, well, before we move on to Akira, <laughs> we were like, or Asher at, like, a little before this recording was like, wait, is Suo, or is Tamaki Suo from <laughs> Oran named after this Suo? Is is Tamaki Suo based on <laughs> Nokuru? <laughs> I mean, Tamaki Suo is so like Nokoru. On the other hand, I do believe this like archetype of a character, the rich, eccentric genius who just wants so to love everybody. Yeah. It does show up all over the place. On the other hand, all right, Suo's full name is Suo Takamura and... Tamaki Suo has a lot of those same char- like yeah. <laughs> same sounds. Um, totally different character, but, you know. Yeah, we're like, there's no way, you know, Bisco Hattori didn't read <laughs> The Clamps. Right. <laughs> Did she read Clamp School Detectives? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll never know. Somebody answer this for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just to round out the cast, because I think there's actually way more to say about Clamp School itself than Akira in this, but, you know, we got to give him his little... All right time in the so akira he's here he had his own manga and i feel like this this series in particular like if this is the first thing you read because it's the most put together of all the three of them like you won't get a good sense of akira no (laughs) actually no i feel like this this manga definitely is just like you already know akira (laughs) from man of many faces like 
we don't need to go into his relationship with Uchiko. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to know that, like, you don't need to see, you need to see barely any hints that he is the man, the, you know, 20 faces. You don't need to know that they're super cute, like, whatever. Like, now he's just a funny, as you said, mascot, like, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baking cakes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, if you don't know he's the man of many faces, like, you don't know why he's there. It's not his show. Yeah, but I think it reveals the thing that's kind of the most bothersome about this manga. The three is like, at least the other two were like, this is ridiculous. But like everybody makes very repeated cameos and allusions to who they are. Whereas this one kind of takes the opposite to act, I feel, Mm. where it's like, we don't ever see uh, Nokuru like interacting with the Dukleon boys yeah. or like running off uh we don't we don't see any clear indication that he runs off to talk to the Dukleon boys right uh we don't we like there's like maybe two references to 20 faces and not in a way that's like 20 faces is going to come and rob something which like when you read man of many faces you think he's robbing stuff all the time he's like leaving letters here and there and everywhere you know <laughs> then, yeah yeah yeah. but in this that never happens and it's kind of like eh, it's like kind of i don't know breaks the world for me a little bit at least sure yeah i think the order that we read these in was the correct order yeah yeah uh, well it was publishing order for sure it works out <laughs> um yeah knowing that he's the man of 20 faces and knowing that this whole time he's like kind of putting on this innocent act like he is this innocent kid even in man of of many faces but like he's particularly playing dumb yeah he just seems super silly in this yeah so it's like it's kind of funny knowing that and it's also like he's not really contributing to the story no like not at all no the one story that like centers him is again one where you're like, we don't, do we have to do this? Right. <laughs> because it's the student teacher relationship. And like, okay, it's a college student and a teacher. We're getting warmer, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We're getting warmer, but it's definitely like, he, there's a misunderstanding about apple pies all around and he's just so good at teaching how to cook apple pies and whoever marries him is gonna be the luckiest lady in the world. And it's like, this is not, I don't need this. Like, (laughs) that's also volume two. Like, you just don't need volume two. Just delete it. Just like, (laughs) (sighs) just skip, just read volume one and volume three and like, you're good, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I think this might also reveal that Utiko was really carrying Man of Many Faces. But. Yeah, no, we knew that. <laughs> You're like, we knew that. That's for sure the thing that's happening. And uh, yeah. So now that we ran it, rounded out the characters, we there's actually, I mean, there's there's lots of characters that we haven't brought up because they're there for an episode and I don't really care. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the fourth important character is one that we have, we have mentioned a few times already. It is Clamp School itself. <laughs> yes. We we have now spent a lot of time uh, within the, the corridors and classrooms and whatever the hell the, the chairman's office space <laughs> is in, in Clamp School. So I want to... The pre I want to give them a bit of the preamble before like a lot of the chapters about, you know, when it's serialized in a magazine, they're like, all right, in case you don't know what's up, like here's the like two to three page spread about what clamp school is and where you are and why you should care, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so here's, here's the lowdown, the facts. Uh, it's basically its own little town that has 10,000 people living there that either work there, go to school there you know, whatever. Uh, So they're all ages because they can be teachers, they can be kindergartners, like whatever. They they apparently have all the essential needs. And I loved when they listed out the essential needs because it was living quarters, research labs, movie theaters, hospitals, and (laughs) banks. And I really feel like one of those things is not like the others, but that's okay. (laughs) That's cool. 
Yeah. We see, we see what clan prioritizes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so they want to make school synonymous with community. Um, the only entry requirements are talent and potential, though we are shown that it is a very ritzy, ritzy place. You know, they got a lot there rolling in money. Yeah, and a lot of the students are very rich. Yeah, a lot of the students are very rich. So they are renowned for academic rigor, but also partying. They get they get down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a chair lady who can spy on them at all times, basically. Mm-hmm. And so Asher... Mm-hmm. as a man who has gone to prep school for all of your oh. life and you know both you and i w- went to snobby college yes what what do you make of this this place <laughs> <laughs> well we we didn't mention the one other significant oh. characteristic which is that it's shaped like a pentagram oh yeah yeah there's definitely some weird occult crap going yeah on yeah here. yeah it was definitely made to summon demons yeah x takes partial place in clamp, in clamp school. school, so oh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, where's where where's the uh, Duke Leon School Defenders in X? Where were the Duke Leon School Defenders in this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Good point. Although they, we didn't need their services, nobody. I don't need them. It's true. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I meant none of the problems that occurred. Were... Okay, well the aliens were here, so I'm fine. That's true. The aliens had a very small cameo. Yes. Um, What do I make of this school? I mean, it's whack. Yeah. It reminds me more of um, Neo Yokio than anything. (laughs) Oh, damn. That's very (laughs) condemning. (laughs) Like, we both love Neo Yokio. We have watched that shit, like, so many times at this point. <laughs> the movie, the Christmas movie is a perfect Christmas movie. That is the one Christmas movie we watch every year in this household. So like, but let's be real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it employs a lot of the same, like, rich private academy tropes that exist in things like Oran and real life. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how much does it align to real life painfully and what is actually ridiculous? I mean, most of it is ridiculous. Uh, but is it is it super ridiculous? <laughs> I mean, there was nobody jumping out of windows to rescue damsels at my school. I don't know about you. Uh, your... I mean, what I've heard about your school, I'm like, <laughs> actually, wait a second. <laughs> Uh, it didn't, no, we didn't have much of that. Uh, and yeah, some of the like, and clamp school detectives does not bring this to the fore at any point, but like some of the uh, power dynamics inherent in like, I think they come up most in Dukleon actually. Yeah, yeah are real like there are tensions between uh students that are there on scholarship and students that didn't have to try so hard to get there like i think for all its want to be a meritocracy i am i was very disappointed that it does not give me that fantasy actually right like it felt very real to our experiences at snob school which are that if you don't have money, you're like, it's hard. And you feel very out of place. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you know, the snob schools we go to in real life, or at least colleges anyway, that have enough of an endowment to make this possible, they are trying, they do try to bring in the best and the brightest. It just also happens that the kids, the students, who show up as the best and the brightest have had the opportunities to do so, which is harder to do when you're coming from less, less power, less money. So I think that's very, they don't even, they don't question it in any of these uh, clamp school series. No. Yeah. Yeah. But like it's, it's, it's there. Oh, it's super there. Yeah. And especially since, you know, I brought up last time that I'm like, it feels like all the romances in clamp manga can only be cute because money is no object. Mm. I guess I felt like this one, like, 
brought up the question of like, yes, we are making the fantasy meritocracy. It's a fantasy. We can overtly like skirt this issue and then it didn't. And I guess that like bothers me. (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I've had it on the brain a lot. I just read Inclusify and, you know, all the ways. And I am very steeped, I guess, in a desire and a, a deep want for a meritocracy, like for meritocracy to actually exist. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. Right. <laughs> and, or like it should, but actually finding ways to yeah compensate for different people's access to things and all of those ways. Like we are generally not willing to put in all of the effort to put in all of those factors and figure out a formula that equals meritocracy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, so, Correct. Yeah. So I guess when I, when I see fantasies about it, I'm like, can you like try a little though? Like you didn't even try. No. <laughs> like, no. Does Clamp ever try in this particular regard? I guess not, but I didn't have to read every Clamp before. So. That's true. <laughs> I just feel like they've never, they love having unlimited resources to play with, with their characters. Yeah. So they can do ridiculous things like make missiles that can go at any (laughs) speed. Yeah. But they don't hurt anything. They're just spy missiles. They're just Chinese spy balloons. Oh my God. (laughs) But then JK. Yeah. Even Utako's presence didn't save that chapter for me. No, that chapter was bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that chapter was really bad. Yeah, both for the forced heteronormativity and this weird missile thing. Like what? Yeah. No, if you do want a weird school that's like kind of trying to be a meritocracy, but actually has commentary about it, go play Danganronpa. You know, <laughs> go watch some kids die. <laughs> Damn. Salt and murders. <laughs> I don't know that I support that <laughs> sentiment, but Asher is allowed to say it. So there we go. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. Would you want to go to clamp school? Uh, You're like, I already did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, my school was not built to summon demons. Um, <laughs> I hope not. I'd, I'm kind of, it'd be kind of fun. I don't know if I'd want to go there, go there, but to like, visit for a week i want to be like a low-level employee there so i can be really yeah. mad all the time. <laughs> why do you want to be mad all the time because i'm from philadelphia <laughs> i just want to I, I do want to see just how incredible it is like money is literally no object at this school it's yeah wild you just want to see what the, like like living not just like the two percent is you want to live like, no 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 i i want to see just how zero one percent i just want to see like how crazy it is there (laughs) um it's not about uh you know living the luxurious life for me i just want to what when you can do anything you want what happens (laughs) you know bad things you blow up stuff (laughs) yeah apparently but inadvertently but also like dang like all right you can just (laughs) you can just reshape this entire wisteria thing all right Just, just because yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting, too, that, you know, like you brought up that Suo and Nokuru have different like personal philosophies, but there is no like man of many faces is just like, I'm going to give you random nonsense that doesn't add up to anything really about love. Right. Like <laughs> we're just going to spout a lot of thoughts about what could or could not be. Right. Mm hmm. And I, I, I guess I found it somewhat interesting in this that, you know, it's all it's very like science. <laughs> science is the thing that they are all praised for, like, you know, no, no crew is going to is gonna be uh, recruited by NASA. What are the what, they, what does this Zaibatsu do? Mechanical engineering when he's the lady's trying to kidnap him or whatever. She's like, you're the best technical engineer ever (laughs) yeah he's already in charge of the engineering division of his parent of Uh, his family's company yeah at he was in third grade so at nine years old (laughs) yes yes adults would definitely respect him totally so 
I don't know. I guess recently I had to make a book list of recommendations about top philosophy books. And, you know, that was kind of hard because I don't know a lot about philosophy. <laughs> so I had to read up about all these different, you know, philosophical modes of thinking, like existentialism and whatever, right? But, you know, clearly in the in the line of philosophy, the thing that comes along and kind of breaks a lot of traditional philosophy is the rise of science mm -hmm. and mathematics. And so I was like, again, I was kind of just like, eh, as the ultimate clamp school detective thing, that's like, or, you know, clamp school thing that's that's the most put together. I kind of, I wanted it to go harder in, into these aspects, but no. of course it did not. <laughs> no. no. If they had, it would be more of a mess though. Like That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but like, as we can see with Man and Many Faces, sometimes the mess is endearing. Yes, right? embrace the mess. But like, I'm just saying. The mess has things that you can latch onto, unlike volume two of whatever this is. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. When you get into the messy stuff, the real stuff rises more to the surface, I think. I'm just saying, like, if this is the most put together of the three that we're looking at in this series, like... You know, it's not, it's going to be less stuff. It's going to be less stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Same. some. It's not always the case. Sometimes things that are well put together do actually really go hard. But, yeah. But uh, not here. Those are the rare things, though. Yes. Those are like the masterpieces. Yes. <laughs> Those are the princess jellyfishes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Tokyo Babylons. <laughs> okay. Well, silly question, I guess. Did you have a favorite case that the clamp school detectives had to solve? I think my favorite was probably the one where they thought there was a ghost. Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it was just cats. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, that was the one that m I really most felt like, okay, we're solving a mystery. Um, also, I enjoy ghosts. My favorite chapter was, of course, the backstory chapter. But the clamp school detectives did not even exist yet. For that one so I can't say that that goes with this question yeah. <laughs> yeah the mystery was what was the incident that happened three years ago yeah, for that yeah, one yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah for me it's pretty hard yeah they're all pretty silly I did kind of enjoy the the Valentine's Day you have to find a very tiny box <laughs> oh yeah you can't use money I liked it because you couldn't use money yes <laughs> He couldn't, he couldn't use anything except his own powers of deduction. And he did actually do it. He did it. And it's like, okay, he can go to some pretty, like, impressive... That was, like, the first time, I think, we actually saw reasons to respect Nikoru. Like, you could like him before if you like that type of character. But I think... Yeah. Yeah. It was also the first of the string of cases. So I, like, wasn't tired of the formula yet. Yeah, yeah, like, this is the first one that's kind of, like, caused by his own making himself so desirable, the superhero <laughs> problem, right? Right. Uh, it's at the end of volume one, so, yeah, you're not into the slog. You're not like, oh, no, volume two is not yeah. going anywhere. <laughs> so I, I just kind of enjoyed that one because, obviously, I keep harping about the money and yeah it is the one time where we see no groove it's like all right he has to work hard like there's no magic bullet uh to solve this problem right like it's just grit <laughs> determination <laughs> and he does it and he does it and so i like that well okay so we, we've already discussed you know structure wise this is definitely the most put together although again it still has that weird turn like because volume two still has a bit of a turn, the other two manga were only two volumes each. Like it felt like it still could have only been two volumes and you would have got the same thing out of it. But so this is the only one of the, the unofficial trilogy that is actually considered a shoujo manga. It ran in a shoujo magazine. Did it feel more shoujo to you? What does being shoujo to you even mean? If so, <laughs> like uh... thoughts? It had more flowers in it. It did have a lot of flowers in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would it was not like 
prettier, I guess? I would not say it felt significantly more shoujo to me than Man of Many Faces anyway. I do think yeah. like with Duke Leon, they were trying to go for a more, like they yeah. were actively shooting for a more shonen vibe, but I don't feel like this is more shoujo than, I don't know, anything else they've done. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, well, they've done other shoujos, right? But right. I, I, I don't, yeah, like... For me, the difference between this and Man, Man of Many Faces is like, shrug? <laughs> like, there, is there one? <laughs> no, I, I'd say there isn't. Yeah. So demographics are silly. It's all about just magazines. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm going to have a lot of fun with that this year based on the things I want to do this year <laughs> overall. Because, uh -huh. you know, I want to do the Cowboy Bebop manga, oh, yeah. which are shoujo. Right. Whereas I I wouldn't classify the anime as a shoujo, no. but <laughs> whatever. Uh, ideally, I would like to do the shonen manga version of Escaflone, where mm. I, I would definitely call that anime a shoujo. And if, you know, that's Esca, Escaflone is where it all began for me, pretty much like in a serious manner. This uh, anime manga shoujo obsession. So to be clear, I. Do not like that shonen manga is bad. <laughs> like, I, I want to talk about it. I haven't read it in like 15 years. It's not going to be better. But <laughs> <laughs> I want to get there. I want to do it. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm going to, I feel like this, this is the year where I'm like, just want to, I want to lean into that uh, dissonance, you know? <laughs> nice. All right. So we got some listener questions. Okay. So the first couple are from Clampcast Pod, which is the one true clamp podcast, which you should be listening to instead of this. I don't know why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so which detective would you be? You would be no crew. <laughs> Thanks. Am I wrong? No, I'd be Akira. Oh, that's true. You would be Akira. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you would be Suo. Like, and easy. I would be Suo. <laughs> it's easy. We, we know exactly who we are. Yeah. I was actually discussing this the other day with Asher. I was like, I feel like my personality is that I'm fun at the times where I'm not supposed to try to be fun. Like at work, I'll try really hard to be like, we don't have to be so serious. And then at parties, I'll be like, can we talk about, uh, yeah, like philosophical, like political, like deep feeling stuff. And people are like, can you just not? <laughs> like, you know, like, I, don't, I don't know how to balance this. Introvert <laughs> problems. Yeah, introvert problem, <laughs> truly. <laughs> okay, uh, second question from Claire Cospod. Any mysteries from your own childhoods you wish you'd had the Clamp School detectives for? They, I mean, they wouldn't have helped me. I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yeah, me, I'm just like, love problems? So, I would not like... go to the Clamp School detectives for love problems. No. There was one time where I was at my neighbor's house for, like, her birthday party. Mm -hmm. um, but I was actually best friends with her brother. And I think he might have had some other friends over, too. And we heard, like, a thump in their closet. And I swear to God, it was a ghost. <laughs> but we will, I would like them to solve which, which boy was messing with us or whatever. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I, I would like Nokuru to go investigate that. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> I also swore that the curtain for the window in my room was a wizard. Mm. Like, I swear it moved a lot. Mm. So I want no curve to investigate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was this giving you new insight into who I am as a person? No. <laughs> my own, my personal struggles. No. No. <laughs> I already knew this about you. I see. I didn't know these specific instances, but um, I, I do know this about you. Yeah. I get scared. <laughs> I, I understand. I don't like ghosts in real life. Yeah. I like the ideas around ghosts. I don't like to be scared. Yeah. We both don't like to be scared. It's a good thing we went to a Halloween installation. We, at a... <laughs> we did it. We overcame. We did it. We overcame. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> or did we? Uh uh, final final question from Clamcat's pod is how about that X cameo though? And honestly, I had been on the lookout for the X characters in this manga, 
and I did not overtly notice it, and we have not yet read X. I know that the three of the the clamp school detectives show up in X. Yeah, I, I really could not find like there were a lot of cases where they could have been in the background, <laughs> and I uh didn't like there were there were ones where I was like specifically looking for them because there were a lot of characters like when the when the aliens were in there, and like Utiko and. There was times where the uh, different ones of them are giving, you know, like science speeches to people and they're going on about how they're geniuses, but there's like a large crowd and like a lot of them actually do have distinct faces. Mm-hmm. But I, I did not register that any of them were like Subaru or Seishiro. <laughs> well, that would be a Tokyo Babylon cameo, not an X cameo. I mean, yes, I know that they are also in X, but like, like, but they're also in X. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Yeah, having only read one volume of X like fifteen years ago, I can't answer. I have no idea. Yeah, know? I was like, I think we're ill-equipped <laughs> for this. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go read X and then be like, uh, we're we're silly. <laughs> <laughs> So at the looted share on Twitter asks, do you think the anime did justice to the source material? So we did not watch the anime. What I read of it seems like it probably gave too much credence <laughs> to the <this> story. <laughs> you know, it's taking it, it's giving it too much time and space. It already took up too much time and space. It didn't need all that, you know? Didn't need 26 episodes. Make it a 13 episode anime. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They also asked, uh, since it's clamp material, any possible cross- crossovers you would want to see with other clamp universes? I mean, I feel like they're probably already in all the ones that I do care about. <laughs> yeah, they're already in. They're in Subasa. They're absolutely in Subasa. I remember them being there. I'd actually, I would love to see, because of their ages, they'd be perfect crossovers for Sakura. Yeah, I was like in, in CCS. Yeah, 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 yeah. That could be cute. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Especially Akira, put him in CCS. Yeah. Um, and like, let Suo and Shaoran uh, have a martial arts contest. Right? I was definitely like, oh, the Kiki boys are appearing <laughs> in this one. Here we go, the Kiki boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, there are characters I feel that Nokuru would get along with very well in other clamp stuff. Like, can't you see no- Nokuru and. Um, Yuko, just like, you know, oh. smiling mysteriously at people behind their fans. <laughs> That's true. They do both love their fans. <laughs> they love their fans. They love knowing more than everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they love being I very strange. I Yuko would get very sick of him, though. Well, I think it would depend on if he had anything she wanted. You know? <laughs> they had any business dealings to make. She doesn't. She hasn't dealt with uh, something as pedestrian as money. <laughs> right. Years. Sure. But he has other stuff. Yeah. Um, he has secrets. He has secrets. He has knowledge. He's finished. Science. <laughs> science. Wow. Um, yeah. let's, let's not go there. Science and uh, magic <laughs> meeting in the middle. I'm into it. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, I, like, I definitely don't want to put him in, like... Rig Veda, you know. <laughs> God. Well, I mean, we don't want anyone to be in Rig Veda. Don't we don't want the characters in Rig Veda to be in Rig Veda. <laughs> That's true. Nobody should be in Rig Veda. God. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't want to send them to the. Can Tokyo we take them Babylon out of X universe? That's terrible. Yeah, can we take them out I of guess the they, X universe? They're already there. Yeah. Just take them out. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, no, they're already there. They're so already there. That's terrible. Them. Poor kids. Does that mean okay. Akira's there too? I'm pretty sure they all. Oh, he doesn't deserve there. that. No, he doesn't deserve that. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He didn't deserve that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure in the original recording, I was like, and final listener question, blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> we have received further listener questions. And I think. A lot of them are pretty good, so I wanna. We're gonna jump in here. The Eagles have now actually, in fact, lost the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> so what else is there for Ashley to to do or live for? 
Yeah, truly, I'm dead inside now, so I don't know why I'm here, but we're going to try to answer some further with listener questions. So, from at Lil Suki Bear on Twitter, out of my own curiosity, how do you think the council would react to Akira being the man of many phases? Well, well Asher, <laughs> Nakoru would be floored. How could a man of his impressive intellect miss all the signs were there all along, blah, blah, blah. He'll be very dramatic about it. But Suo, he might know. Yeah, you think so? Suo knows? I think he might know. Because he's the one who's always gathering the information on everything, right? Also, he's, and he's a ninja. And he's a ninja. So he has seen 20 faces in action, right? And he's seen Akira move. And by the end of it, he's seen Akira move under like a physical threat. So like he might he might have figured it out, but he 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 doesn't care. It doesn't impact his uh, job essentially, which is to protect Nokuru and make sure he's the best Nokuru he can be. Correct. I'm like, do I agree that Nokuru? I mean, I definitely agree that Nokuru would be floored. <laughs> Just absolutely, how could you? (laughs) (laughs) I guess by the same token, how do you think Akira would react if he knew that Nokuru led, like, the Dukleon boys? I think he would, he'd be shocked for a second because he just has the simple expected reactions to all things. Because he's a simple man. He is a simple man of many faces. But then he'd be like, he would think about it and he'd be like, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense. That aligns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like he already thinks Nokoru knows everything and do- is able to do everything. So why wouldn't Nokoru be the one in charge of the Clamp School defector- Defenders, you know? Also, gee, he sure does like that Duke Leon Bakery, huh? He sure does like that Duke Leon Bakery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like... Is Nokuru surprised not just because he thinks he knows everything, but also because it doesn't align with his perception of Akira? <laughs> okay, but he th- he thought Akira would be a good fit to play the man of 20 oh, Faces. That's true. So, but was that the gap, Moe? <laughs> I, 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 I genuinely no. I don't. I don't think so. I think he like saw the man of 20 Faces. Just, you know, registered his body type and whatever. Looked at Akira and was like, hmm, okay. Mm, That seems right. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I I think, you know, maybe some unconscious part of him did realize. Because he's not stupid. (laughs) Um, He's supposed to be very smart. But then he was like, oh, nah, the can't be. Also, plot armor. Plot armor. (laughs) Well, little Suki Bear also wanted to know, when do you think Akira told Uchiko his identity? So I think it's implied in Clamp School Detectives that she probably doesn't know either, which I guess... So he definitely tells her within the course of Man of, of Many Faces, yes. the manga. Yes. Like, pretty fast she, she knows that. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess brings up an interesting, like, timeline, perhaps, question of, like, is this before Man of Many Faces, actually? Like... I don't know. It's a good question. Or are we all just like, you know, there's Utsuko is not really super in Clamp School Detectives. So who really knows what she does or does not know at this point? Yeah, I think it's hard to say. We don't see Akira and Utsuko in the same space in Clamp School Detectives. So we, we don't know if, I mean, he would recognize her, but. Yeah, I, it, who knows? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. So, at Older Sister San on Twitter says, What do you think happened after Nokuru went to high school? The president's position became vacant. Did his friends possibly get out of the council? I think they all just keep being the council of whatever division they're in. I guess I would get messed up for one year, though, because they're not all... Or, would get messed up for multiple years because they're not all the same age yeah it's they're they're each one year apart yeah 
I think what could happen is that Suo could skip a grade. What really, the the real core is that Suo and Nokoru are the team, really. Like, Akira's just kind of there. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, either, um, I think the next division up is the junior high division. Either Nokoru does it alone again for a year and works, he would still be working fairly closely with the elementary school division if they're uh if they're working together with uh Utako in the kindergarten division is any indication. It's not like Nokoru's gone forever. Cause obviously he would go and become the he he would be on the next student council. But I think I think Suo would just go with him. <laughs> Suo just he is you know, Nokuru is Suo's destiny after all. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Heats <laughs> then. Yeah. Uh, which then I think would mean Akira is student council president for two years. And uh, Really? I don't think he would do that. I don't know that anybody would step up. <laughs> I think he's stuck with the job. Oh, if he's If he's stuck with the job, he can't, he won't say no. Someone's got to do it. I guess so. Poor Akira. <laughs> His life's so difficult. I don't know when uh, Utako... Like, is the kindergarten division just kindergarten? Because if so, and then Utako goes to first grade, she can join the student council. Yeah, I was like, I guess she can be with... Yeah. Her lover. <laughs> Akira. Yeah. And um, her sister could be on it, too. There we go. Terrifying student council. Terrifying student just council. We as, solved it. Just as more terrifying, I think, than uh, the clamp school detectives. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with Utiko on this is inherently more threatening. Yes. yes. Matoko too. I think. <laughs> oh, that's true. Terrifying child. Terrifying child. <laughs> Great. We solved it. Um, <laughs> clamp school d- is um, a terrible place. Anyway. <laughs> it's a democracy of youth. Oh, Which yes, is synonymous, is synonymous with terrible place. Yeah. Uh, I think the last question we'll get further into things that we have perhaps brought up before, but not hard enough. Um, but so we're almost there. So at Crystal the Sailor Scout on Instagram um, said, No crew got a major part in Dukleon, and Akiro is the star of The Man of Many Faces. Which clamp title would you have liked Suo to have a solo role in? What kind of story would you give Suo the lead in? All right, fan fiction man over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I said when we discussed this offline. <laughs> oh, no. What, what did I say? Was it cool? I thought it was pretty good. Let me try to remember as well. Damn, what did you say? <laughs> you said a ninja story, and I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Did I say a detective story? Like actual detecting stuff? Uh, oh, yeah. I think, I, I think you did. I think I said something like that. Like he notices things and solves them. <laughs> Unlike the rest of the students. Okay, council. but wait. So do you still, you want him to be like a ninja who is a detective? I just want to be clear yeah no he gets to stay who he is Uh, no i did come up with a different story i think but that was the first thing i said was like all right they're the clamp school detectives but they don't do that much detecting suo would actually do a good job at that in his non-existent free time yeah oh what did i say he should do you want him to just bodyguard Nokuru? <laughs> Nokuru well, that's his destiny. But I think yeah, he can do other things while still having that destiny, you know? Like, it's not fair that he doesn't get his own thing. Truly unfair. Clamp clearly does not love the the straight lace. <laughs> Hard butts. <laughs> I don't think that's true, because they love Jotaro Kujo. Well, they're not good at writing Maybe. them as the primary leads, then. That's true, I think. Man, I, I don't remember. Whatever fanfic I made for him, it was awesome. It was awesome. But it's gone. It's gone. It left his brain immediately because he has ADHD. <laughs> You're going to remember after we stop recording again. Probably. <laughs> it's going to bother me too. 
It's going to bother you and then it's going to come back. All right. Well, all right. This one's kind of a downer question, but how do you co- how how do the cover illustrations for Lost in a Maze and Wait Until Dark impact your overall impression of the series? It always comes out of nowhere and dis- disrupts my enjoyment of the reading experience. That question was also still from Crystal, the Sailor Scout, on Instagram. And I'm glad that this was brought up, actually, because, yeah, Asher and I are in the clean recording. We did not mention this, but apparently while we were both reading, we were both like, eh, yikes, <laughs> to these illustrations. So Lost in a Maze is, I think, like the second to last or last chapter of volume one. And that illustration, you kind of, like, it gives me pause. They they look like they're in some kind of World War II era military uniform. And they're standing in kind of like a triangle, you know, like Nokuru in the front or whatever. And Akira and Suo in the back. And you're kind of like, okay, like, I don't know what the point of this is. And it's mildly uncomfortable. But, like, I give that one a pass. Like, whatever. (laughs) Uh, but you know, wait, wait until dark. The title illustration is them basically hailing Hitler. <laughs> like they're definitely doing that pose, um, in a very, I think, typical kind of nationalistic background looking thing for Japan where it has the like sun stripes and then it has whatever silly illustration that they were using in this. I forget what it was exactly, but there's some, instead of the sun, it's some, very silly thing that they're hailing and i was like no (laughs) why is this here this is uncomfortable (laughs) yeah yeah like like crystal the sailor scout said it disrupts my enjoyment of the reading experience and as soon as i turn the page i have forgotten about it yeah like it really has no bearing on the story other than oh yeah it is the cat the <laughs> oh, it was a um, cat. whatever yeah so it has no bearing on the story but it other than to make you be like yeah clamp school is a dystopia that will not acknowledge that it's a dystopia <laughs> within the story i didn't even and that's uncomfortable I, I didn't even go there like my brain goes to, okay, Japan was allied with Nazi Germany. I mean, yeah, they were allied with Nazi Germany. It, so and In World War II. And there is a tendency, and I think there was more of a tendency earlier than there is now, to fetishize that style of military uniform, that it, to romanticize kind of yeah the the german military in particular in 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 japanese media or at least in anime like this is not the only place i have seen this it is always uncomfortable but like because the title pages almost never have anything to do with what's going on in the stories i forget i i just legit forget that i saw it <laughs> You know? Yeah, I mean, I definitely acknowledged it in my notes. Uh, but really, this just solidifies to me that, again, you can delete volume two. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> you don't. That's how it starts off. You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> like, it's entirely superfluous. <laughs> superfluous and uncomfortable, so delete it. <laughs> it will not take away from your enjoyment of the rest of it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. To me, it it definitely speaks to, you know, we were talking about how it's basically a little nation state that Clamp has created. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, this is what you get. <laughs> this, is what you, this is what you get when you go down that path. And yeah, I, I don't want to make like, I don't really know anything about how Japan feels about their alliance with Nazi Germany. I could tell you, you know, Germany itself, like, I studied German in school and I studied, like, learned about how to memorialize things and Germany and how Germany has really actually been a very exemplary example of, like, how to 
try to make amends for something so 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 terrible right? yeah. <laughs> like yeah how to do reparations germany yeah. has yeah. been actually very dedicated to um acknowledging its past its you know atrocities and really trying to be better and to help the people it hurt and killed you know like there's no yeah. making up for it but they no. do not f- forget no they try very hard to remember and be like let's never do this again how about that but i feel like when it comes to japan and like the current alliance with the US and like the atrocities that we did to each other and then the alliance with Nazi Germany. I'm like, I don't really know how that all plays <laughs> out in like contemporary or semi contemporary since this was almost this was 30 years ago at this point. The, yeah. uh, this manga. Um, you know, I'm like, I don't I don't I cannot speak to how the, the zeitgeist <laughs> what it like is around all of those issues. Basically, World War II is a terrible time. Everybody comes out looking like kind of terrible, <laughs> but some people come out looking more terrible than others. And Germany's one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so like, why did this have to be here? I don't know. It sucks. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Back to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> From at mergerger07 on Twitter. How would the clamp school detectives react to period cramps? Also, how would they fix it? And so, first of all, I have to say that this is the greatest question I have received across 99 main episodes so far. (laughs) (laughs) And like, genuinely, this is the kind of thing that I wonder about when I read, say, the aforementioned Hunger Games. I'm like, what does Katniss do when she gets a period? Does Katniss get a period? Mm. Because she's so starving. Like, does she have periods? Like, I want to know. Like, how does it work? <laughs> and, like, I read Throne of Glass. And in Throne of Glass, it's actually overtly addressed. And I'm like, oh, now I have to begrudgingly give props to the story that I think is subpar. <laughs> <laughs> like, people people love that series. But I'm like, overall, I'm like, eh, on it. But I'm like, I give it props for that one thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Tamara Pierce addresses it. Yeah. I think Poppy Wars addresses it. Great. I points to Poppy Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go read it now. <laughs> uh, uh. So so I love this question. <laughs> so, Asher, do you have an actual answer to the question? <laughs> I think that Nokoru already knows about cramps. Okay, yes. The first I was definitely like, which of them knows about cramps? Not Akira. <laughs> no. Akira, we don't go to Akira with this. No. Or we do, but only, you know, Akira makes some chocolate, you know? Yes. Um, yes. Make a delicious fudge cake. Oh, yes. Akira. <laughs> yes. So, but like Nokoru has to um, uh, facilitate that. I don't think, I don't think Suo knows about cramps. You don't think Suo? It depends on if he has any sisters. Mm. I got the sense that he's not like the only kid in his family. Yeah. Or that that part of his family isn't the only branch. Mm -hmm. Um, And we saw that he has a mom. But, like, there's no – from what we have seen, he's in fifth grade. There's no real reason for him to know much about periods, you know? Yeah. The the girls around him are only maybe starting to get some periods. Yeah, yeah. Um, So he doesn't know, but he – I think he is aware that Nokoru is an expert on all things female – so he will defer to Nokoru and just do whatever Nokoru asks of him. So this one actually really goes to Nokoru. Yes. Nokoru knows. He knows he's researched all the the medicine, the current medicine and the like the wives tales and he is going to be there for anyone <laughs> in pain. He's got the he's got the He'll send Suo off to like make tea really fast. Akira's on chocolate duty, yeah, you know, Akira. anything they need. Like uh-huh. Suo, Suo's got to like carry this this ailing ailing girl to the nurse's office on a palan- palanquin. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Yes, he's going to be the most doting caretaker. Yeah, 
<laughs> so is Nokuru um, offended by the lack of research into women's reproductive crampy cramps? Yeah, you know, that's like his destiny. Things like, are not, dang. We're yes. just crazy. Is he offended for the ladies? He's deeply offended. He's deeply this offended. this is an area in which he is actually a feminist. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Why are you not helping? Why are you not being an ally to these women and female assigned people? Yeah. You are letting them be distressed every month. <laughs> yes. He he then dedicates his entire life to fixing this. And Suo is like, that is not what you were supposed to do, but okay. All I right. decided to protect you because you were supposed to go to NASA. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. That's not it. All right. Well, segue. This is a segue Ugh. into shipping. Shipping. Because of Asher. Mm-hmm. Suo has a girl. Ugh. Who, who can play the flute is in kindergarten. Yeah. The kindergarten part doesn't bother me here as much as the fact that it, like, why? Why is why is there headed normativity? No, it's just like she has no personality except. Oh, yeah, no. It's all why, all why. Yeah. <laughs> all her, her design is beautiful. At first I was like, That's okay, why. actually I could be into this. Then I found out that, like, no, she's like this nothingness kindergartner who barely exists. And it's like, well, why? Yeah, because then in the backstory. So to be clear, we ship, ship Suo and Nokuru, yes? Yeah, they're just, they're already, yeah. <laughs> like they do have the similar dynamic to the Dukleon guys. Yes. To, to a less ridiculous degree. They right? have it, except that Suo actually respects Nagisa. Yes, yes. Nokoru, sorry. I mean, he respects Nagisa too, probably. But yeah, he actually respects Nokoru and has fondness for him. Whereas it really seems like Keitaro is kind of just pushing his feelings yeah. on Takeshi, which it's like, come on. I agree with that assessment. Yeah, I'm I'm just confused by the forced heteronormativity here. Like a chapter's really weak. The geese is really weak. Suo doesn't have sexuality, honestly. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is this here? Like And then the backstory chapter is like, yeah, it's, that's like pretty serious. Yeah. That's uh, his destiny. Like yeah. dang. We got we got the Hitsuzen finally. Yeah, the Hitsuzen came. <laughs> and it's so, you know, it's like, all right, I mean, I don't yeah, I don't really get it. Yeah. Like Clamp isn't afraid to be queer usually. So that's a pretty weird choice in my opinion. Yeah. I wonder if it wh- what where was this published originally? Monthly Asuka. I don't know too much about that one, but maybe it was just a little too too early for that one mm. maybe it's marketed at a younger crowd as well at least according to wikipedia it is aimed at teenagers teenage girls hmm. idk maybe maybe they were experimenting with with uh heteronormativity they were they were like <laughs> let us see it's like yeah what does what, what it what does it feel like to try this on <laughs> yeah like legal drug is also in monthly oscar oh wow wish an ex <laughs> oh dear oh hmm. dear okay so uh i i think maybe they were legit just like trying it on see how uh, they liked it and then they were like we don't like it actually so here's this backstory chapter and they were like this didn't work <laughs> 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 okay maybe yeah i mean the, obviously utsuko and akira there's jokes about that i did like the one thing i liked was about no- Nokuru was when he gave Akira and when he's just messing with Akira and Suo, like, <laughs> you guys already have lovers or whatever. And they're like, no, what? No, yeah. we're not getting married. We're, we're 12 or whatever. <laughs> they're know? not even 12. They're not even 12. If <laughs> any of them are is 12, it's, it's Nokuru. <laughs> yeah. 
And they're just like, no, don't blushies, don't mention that stuff. And he's like, oh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> so easy. It's like, yes, all right. Yeah, play, prey on their weaknesses. Yeah. And, you know, that's very funny because I am absolutely, I would still absolutely act like Suo in that situation. <laughs> like, I am so easy you're married. To, to mess with like that. <laughs> you're 33 and you're married. But if someone was like, oh, you like Asher. Yeah, I'm so easy to mess with in this. Not like exactly like that, but in, you know, like absolutely e- easily. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I know you know. <laughs> That's why we're married. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, yeah, and then, and then the only other one was the student teacher thing, which oh god, no, boo. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as most of their student teacher it's things. True. Again, it's true. Not as but... bad as most of them. Mm, no. Doesn't make you good. No. No. <laughs> All right. So I think that that is you know, clamp school detectives. Um, do you have any final thoughts before we do our? Our ranking again. I'd love to see them older. You know? You will, not yes. just in a crossover thing <laughs> where they're kind of not themselves anymore, but like I want to know what where they went, you know? I'd love to see Clamp like pick them back up and, and do something else with them. Yeah, we 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 rebooted CCS. Yeah. So just <laughs> reboot this. <laughs> yeah. Take this one seriously. What happens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us between now and X. <laughs> yeah, God. I mean, tell us between now and the end of time. Why don't you just say it like that? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go finish X? God. And then reboot this. <laughs> they're not going to. We're just going to dictate the clamp now what they should be doing. <laughs> As if they care. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not going to do it. And they shouldn't care. <laughs> no. Nope. All right. So once again, we are going to rank all of the clamp that we have done on this podcast so far. Because there's a fair amount at this point. X isn't one of them. We'll get there, baby. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is still God tier, Tokyo Babylon. Pretty good stuff I like. Magic Knight Rare Earth. Card Capture Sakura. Man of Many Faces. Clamp School Detectives. I might have to bump Dukleon. Well, Dukleon can still stay in the in the bottom of pretty good stuff I like. <laughs> <laughs> Things I could do without. Angelic Lair, Ichan can knock a boom. <laughs> Rig Veda, Chobits, and Wish. All right. Uh, I mean, my my choices have been similar to yours, and I think my choices remain similar to what they have been. I hope throughout all three recordings you have flipped at least one of them, and it will be very funny. <laughs> I mean, my top doesn't really flip. No. Because you're always just going to pick Magic Knight Earth. I am just going to pick Magic Knight Ray Earth. Um, formative, you know, I can't break that nostalgia either. So, yeah. So, MKR is at my top. Yeah, Card Captor Sakura, Tokyo Babylon. Now it's getting more like, uh, now what do I do? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> of what's left, I think I have to say Man of Many Faces. That might be a flip. Angelic layer. <laughs> Choices. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Chobits, Clamp School Detectives, Dukleon, Rig Veda Wish. <laughs> Damn. Credence. Credence to the Chobits there. <laughs> Chobits has more to work with. Has a lot to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Am I in love with the characters or the story? No. Do I think that universe is fascinating? Yes. Do I love playing with the idea of Chobits? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think as someone who does more fanfic than you, like there's more for me to dig into there. And then Angelic Lair, I think I've got some heavy nostalgia goggles on there. Yeah, you um, definitely do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I accept that. I also just think like, you know, I I have a weakness for the 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 toys and the tournaments and the shonen stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now that we have completed our uh, trilogy of, of clamp school things, 
A- Asher has to finally finish rabbinical school. So <laughs> we'll probably not do, I do not have in the plans. I actually have a fair, like, I have a desired wish list through, like, June at this point, right? Like, for airing. Um, so it doesn't include any more clamp works. But uh, it's becoming really slim pickings for things before Sumasan and Holic. So we might really have to bite the bullet and do X. <laughs> or we'll keep messing around and doing very short <laughs> things. Until there's literally nothing left. (laughs) (laughs) Only X is standing between me and my desire to do Tsubasa and Holic. (laughs) (laughs) Something will give, but not again until July, probably, (laughs) at this rate. (laughs) Right. Um, So, you know, whatever. Uh, Thanks again for listening. Thanks for listening to Show Don't Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns. You need to tell us which one of the trilogy that you liked the most. Tell us how our ranking is wrong. <laughs> Email shoujoandtell at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode's YouTube page. We're at shoujoandtell on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Can't say words. Can't say made up words. You cannot find Asher on the internet. He is mine. He is mine everywhere. Uh, <laughs> are you excited every time you see a new episode from us? If so, please consider leaving a rating on Apple Podcasts. This will help the show reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening. Our next episode, our next episode is going to be our 100th main episode. So, we're gonna finally do Sailor Moon. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Gonna, gonna do the first half of Sailor Moon. That's right. We're finally gonna talk about probably the most beloved, famous, well-known shoujo of all time. Uh, No pressure. (laughs) Stay tuned. Until then, bye. In the name of the moon, I'll punish you. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Asher's got it. (laughs) I've watched a lot more Sailor Moon than Ashley has. You definitely have. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) 